Welcome to Math Tutorials. In this lesson, we're going to take a look at uh, an example from a goodness of fit test. It's in section 11.2 in Mario Triola's elementary statistics book that we use for this for our class. And um, yeah, let's just go to that and take a look at it. Here it is. It says, Conduct the hypothesis test and provide the test statistic, the critical value, and p-value, and state the conclusion. A person purchased a slot machine and tested it by playing it 1,206 times. There are 10 different categories of outcomes, including no win, win jackpot, win with three bells, and so on. When testing the claim that the observed outcomes agree with the expected frequencies, the author obtained a test statistic of chi-squared equals 16.099. Use a 0 .10 significance level to test the claim that the actual outcomes agree with the expected frequencies. Does the slot machine appear to be functioning as expected? So the first question here is, uh, what is the test statistic? They're asking you for that. And uh, that's already provided in the problem. You just locate it. It says the test statistic is chi-squared equals 16.099. So the answer to the first part is 16.099. Now the second question they ask is, what is the critical value? And we're out into three decimal places. So let's get into how to do that. Um, normally you could use the uh, TI-83, or you could use Minitab, or you could use StatDisk, or Excel, and you would be entering observed values and expected values, and you could have the computer use that data to compute out the critical value and the p-value and the test statistic. Um, in this case, we don't actually have the data, though. We don't have the observation, so we can't really do it that way. Um, and we're going to do it by hand using uh, the tables from the book. Okay, so let's just note a couple things. Our level of significance is 10% or 0 0.10. Okay, so we're going to use that, and there are 10 different categories. Okay, so what I want to do is take a look at a table in the book. Okay, and then and then see where to go from there. So here's the table. It's on page 755 in the book and it's called Table A4 Chi-Squared Distribution. So here's what I really want to notice. I want to look up uh, for the critical values. We've got degrees of freedom. Remember we had 10 different categories. So degrees of freedom is going to be that 10 minus 1 or 9. So we're going to be looking here in row, the row with number 9 here of degrees of freedom. And then our level of significance is 10%, 0 0.10. So the area to the right is 0.10. So we just go to that column, and 0.10 is the area to the right. We went 9 degrees of freedom, and there we are. Our critical value is 14.684. Okay, so that's how we come up with that number which we can put in here, 14.684 is the critical value. Now the next question is to find the p-value and then make a decision. So that's a little bit harder. Again, if you had a software that you were running it on, you could, you could get the value, but using the table we could just get an approximation. Okay, so let's do that. We're going to use the table. Keep it in mind that our test statistic is 16.099. That's what we want to look at. So go back to the table. And I'm under 9 degrees of freedom, so I want to see where my test statistic falls. 16.099. If I just look through this uh, row, you find the numbers where 16.099 falls between them. So it falls between 14.684 and 16.919. Okay, so our test statistic is between these two. And if you look up at the top to the column name of these two, that's going to tell you the size uh, area that it gives you to the right. So here we've got 10% uh, for the 14.684, and we've got 5% for the 16.919. So the with our test statistic falling between these two, it means that the p-value is going to be between those two numbers. So we know from this that our p-value is between 0.05 and 0.1. Okay, so that's that's the key here the p-values between those two. So we've just found, figured out 
that the p-value is, well, we could say, say it this way. If you call it p, it's between 0 0.05 and 0 0.10. Now, recall that our uh, level of significance is 0.10. So we can conclude that our p-value is less than alpha because right here it's less than 0.10 and alpha is equal to 0.10. Right, so the p-value is less than alpha, which means we reject the null hypothesis HO. And if you remember how this works, the hypotheses that we're testing are HO is that the observed outcomes agree with the expected frequencies. And then H1 is that at least one of the proportions is not equal to the given claimed value. Okay, so with with our p-value being less than alpha and us rejecting the null hypothesis, then that means we're rejecting HO. Okay, so we're going to be looking at H1 um, probably being true. So let's go through the wording of that, but the point is where we're going to reject HO, we're going to reject that the observed outcomes agree with the expected frequencies. So our conclusion here is going to be that since at least one of the proportions is not equal to the given claimed value, it's not what we expected. So for the question that they asked, um, does the slot machine appear to be functioning as expected? The answer is no, it doesn't appear to be functioning as expected.